Hey, what's going on all you hustling dads out there? My name is Will Crown. Today I have the privilege of having a good friend of mine, Mr. Josue Cortez. What's up, brother? Nice to be here, bro. Glad to have you. Hey, I appreciate him taking the time because he's after it. Oh, <laughs> oh busy man all the time. He's hard to track down. You know, it's Mexican, so always working. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know this one is for sure. I typically have come from the perspective of a married dad, you know, because that's me, 18 years married, but the bottom line is I'd venture to say half or probably more yeah. of the hustling dads out there are single fathers who are busting their butt, really trying to provide a better life for their kids than maybe they had ever had growing up. And when we're children, oftentimes our early childhood development affects the type of fathers that we become. That's right. You ever heard of uh, Dr. Laura? Absolutely. From back in the day, right? Yeah. She actually is well known for saying that you get two shots in your life at the father-son relationship. You know, one when you're the son, obviously and then one when you're the father. So I wanna hand it over to this guy. Tell me a little bit about your upbringing. When I grew up in South Central LA, so uh, not too far from here, you know, but it was a, a really rough neighborhood to grow up in. Sure. I am the oldest uh, boy of eight. I have two oh, older no. sisters. Yeah. Wait, 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 <laughs> eight kids? Eight kids That's in South Central, man. Packed That's house, dude. It's a packed house. Wow. Packed bathroom, packed everything. Did you, ever have, did you ever have food in the refrigerator? or? You know, th there were some times where, you know, tortillas and beans, that's how we got by. You know, that's, that's just, that's just the, being real. But my dad, um, you know, was a pretty abusive uh, alcoholic towards my mom. So there was just a lot of uh, tension, friction growing mm -hmm. up. Things that I got to see, you know, my dad... Uh, hitting on my mo hitting my mom and uh, just a lot of alcohol. So abuse. You would actually see that, like mm -hmm. it was. Oh wow! Yeah, there was. You know, I could very vividly remember just like hiding in the corner because he was whooping on her pretty bad. So, and then when I was, uh, you know, thirteen years old, that's when they got a divorce. When when that happened, I found out not that he wasn't my real father. Uh, he had actually uh, came into my life when I was like a few months old. The first time I saw my birth certificate. And on the birth certificate, it had someone else's name on there, on their dad's name. What did what did that feel like? It was a uh, mixed emotions, really. I was almost glad because of the type of person that he was. Yeah, kind but of a relief. It, yeah, a little bit of a relief. And then it kind of explained a lot of things, like why I look different than everybody, why I'm taller than everybody. Um, yeah, you're a big guy. How tall are you? 6'2". This guy is <laughs> he's a stud walking through the door. You're uh, like, dang. I got to find out. Yeah. who my real dad is where do i actually come from and sure. are there more people like me so did you have that feeling like instantly like i gotta find out or get to know my real dad or was that something that it took a while it just it took a while for me to mm -hmm. even have that feeling inside that i needed once i you know got older I, I really felt the urge to find out who i am and where i came from like you say older how old were you when you started looking or did you ever actually find out yeah yeah so uh when i turned 18 uh, that's when I started looking for my dad and uh, I remember very distinctly having a conversation with my mom saying you know I want to find my dad what do you know and she wow. what she did was she handed me a picture of my dad in 1977 <laughs> <laughs> well, on like the, that's gonna really yeah, yeah and on the back of the picture <laughs> mom was a little mom was smart she had his social security number so um, she goes, this is all I have. Good luck. I had a really good friend of mine who worked at a car dealership. And I was like, hey, man, can you run this social security number? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah and I was, There's a way to take care of that. I know. Yeah. He's like, dude, you're going to get me fired. I'm like, no, don't worry. We have the same first name. Just tell me you thought it was me. <laughs> I got this, the credit report back, and it showed me where he worked. Okay. You know, And uh, he was working at Cook County Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. I didn't know the department he worked in, and it was a private hospital. Okay. So they're like, oh, I'm sorry, we can't tell you. So I called back, you know, a bunch of times with different departments, housekeeping. Just trying to get somebody at the ball in the middle of school of beans. Hey, do, you know, you. do you know this guy? No, nobody knew. Wow. Uh, but it's anyway, crazy. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of gave up. Two years went by. You know, I was about to have a baby. I did a Yahoo people search. I had just bought a computer, you know, dial it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that. So, yeah, yeah. We, yep. we did a Yahoo people search that time. <laughs> it was one guy who lived in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. I call up his house. His wife answers the phone. And uh, she and I'm just asking for him. And she's like, oh, he's not home right now. He'll be home like at 530 or whatever. I just want to make sure I have the right person. She goes, okay. 
is he, you know, his name this, he comes from Guatemala, green eyes, this and that, like a bunch of details, all the details that I had. Yeah. And she's like, yes, yes, yes. Who is this? And I'm like, oh man. And you're about to tell yeah, I'm about to the tell. wife of your father <laughs> who may or may not even know that you exist, right? She did not know. She did not know. Uh -huh. uh, so, and I said, well, I think he's my dad. And she says, how old are you? And I said, I'm 20. And she says, well, our oldest daughter is 18. Uh, where do you live? I said, I, I live in California. Yeah, he did come from California. What's your mom's name? I said, look, look, I don't want to cause any problems. I'm a grown man. I don't need anything. Oh, wow. I just wanted to say hi to the guy. She says, no, no, no. If you are who you say you are, he's going to call you. But what's your mom's name? <laughs> and I'll have him call you then. I said, okay. We got off the phone. Well, he tells me his side of the story that when he walked in the door, she was like, sit down. We need to talk. Ooh. And he's like, okay. I don't know if anybody else has ever had a conversation <laughs> like that. Sit down. We need to talk. That's, that's no good. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. But uh, when they sat down, um, she just told him, hey, got a call from your son 20 years ago, California, Leticia, ring a bell, you know? And he's like, yeah. And uh, wow. it was like a bucket of ice cold water on him. But he called me. He called me back. And uh, when I answered the phone and I heard his voice for the first time, my heart was just like, you know, I knew it was him instantly. He says, where do you live? And I told him, and he's like, can you pick me up from the airport? I'm like, yeah. He dropped everything. Got on the first flight out. I saw him. I, at first, I was like, how am I even going to know it's him? Right. Because there was no texting with freaking selfies. And, <laughs> but when I saw him, it was like looking in the mirror 20 years down the road. No kidding. Yeah. Gives me a handshake and kind of like a pat on the back. Wow. You know? And it was just, it was that. And then on the way home, that's when he just broke down. He was just crying and crying. Really? And he was just like, you know, I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. I'm sorry that, you know, um, hopefully if you allow me, then, you know, we can have a great relationship now. And uh, that was 21 years ago. And today, he's like my best friend. I could have been upset, like growing wow. up in South Central, seeing all the different things that I went through. But, yeah. but um, I just decided that, you know what, I want him to be a part of my children's lives. I want to be a part of his life. And and we've, we've had an amazing relationship ever since. What a phenomenal story. I'm a firm believer. A big part of who we are as dads, you know, whether we're good fathers or obviously if we choose not to be and we're absentee, it's oftentimes stemming from the, the upbringing that we had. That's right. Tell me, how much of an effect do you think your situation had on the dad you are today? For whatever reason, I would have grew up differently. Um, I wouldn't have made it such a, a passion of mine to be a both of my kids, everything, yeah. you know, even when I was in Texas and they were here in California, uh, when my son's first football game came, I flew in just for that <laughs> and then flew right back awesome. to, you know, Good um, day. I'm trying to set up, um, break that chain yeah. of brokenness and then set him up so that he can be an awesome father too. Yeah. Yeah. I say he, but it's also for my daughter. Okay. So you have one of each? Yeah. A girl and a boy. Okay. So, um, I just talk about him a lot more. I know she sports. And <laughs> sports, yeah. No more sports for him though. If your daughter watches this, he loves you very much. <laughs> Raina. <laughs> this resonates a lot, you know, with me. I, I was the oldest boy of five children. My mom, she was a single mom at the age of about eleven years old when she couldn't afford us anymore. And we were in New York at the time. We ended up going to a school in Pennsylvania. That was specifically for poor kids, you know, kids from broken homes and poor socioeconomic backgrounds. And we grew up there, you know, that's where I, I got my upbringing. So a lot of how I am as a dad today stems from the fact that I didn't have a dad. And a big shout out to any of you guys who are teachers, because one teacher in particular who started coming out to my baseball games, you know, when I was playing in T-ball. To support you. Um, to su just to support me. So, That's uh, awesome. Um, even if you're not a dad, but if you see a kid or something like that, you know, to be a mentor and step in like that is, it, I, I still remember him. Yeah. And I can see his face right now. And I was 10 years old. It was the same way for me. My wrestling coach was like the main 
father figure in my life. And of course the guy that raised me because I was in a student home with like 12 other boys, just an amazing guy. And I still have a relationship with him today. Whenever I go back to that part of the country, I make sure to see him, yeah. you know? Were there any other male role models that were instrumental in your upbringing? I had positive ones and a few negative right, ones. Right, right, we all have When you're absent, ones. when you don't have a dad, <laughs> man, you, you attach yourself to the first thing you see. You know, I was exposed to a lot of things that a young kid should never see. So if you have the opportunity to to foster a relationship like that with, with a young kid who maybe do doesn't it. have that, yeah, Absolutely. do it. I mean, it's, it's life-altering stuff right there. As kids, when we're growing up, we're going to find a role model. Yes. Now, whether or not that role model is going to be positive or negative, that really depends on who's there in front of us at that time. Super important to make sure that with your kids that you are there, that you're not only someone they know of and they know dad's working hard and he's out there and he tries to provide a better life, but that they can actually see you. The quality of time that you have with your children makes a huge impact on the people they become. Absolutely. And I remember the, you know, your one of your episodes, you talked about quality versus uh, quant uh, quantity of time. Yeah. And uh, for me, I always was of the mentality that as long as I provided a paycheck, that I was doing my duty as a father, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people think that. Yeah. Right. And so um, luckily, you know, somebody corrected that thinking for me. And, awesome. and, your, and our kids will tell us that, you know, they want to just spend time with us. They want to be yeah. connected with us. It, it's not about how many Xbox games you can get them or PS4 or whatever. Um, it's really about, you know, kicking the ball around or just taking them to the movies or whatever it is. Shoulder to shoulder time. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. Hey, you look good, dog. You look good, dog. <laughs> it has been such a privilege to have this guy on the show. But I also know that you've got some very creative pursuits and yeah, some things that you're passionate about, right? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to be working on my own uh, vlog, own uh, okay. uh, YouTube channel, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Too many vloggers out there. I know, there. right? <laughs> uh, but basically, um, I've been single for four years and... Um, that transition from being married to, to now singlehood and being a single father can be really, really challenging. Yeah. So uh, all the different people that I come across and I'll be interviewing, talking to about being a single parent, uh, about going on dates, on all that stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a great learning experience. I can imagine you have some stories to tell. A lot of stories, man. Some really bad dates. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me also before this, he said he's bought a lot of cups of coffee. Lots of cups of coffee. <laughs> I'm all wired up. <laughs> he kind of vets the girls that he was going to date is what he was doing before. So Starbucks date first. Starbucks we... date first. If there's a connection, yeah, then you want to set up an actual date. It wasn't always smart, man. Like the very first date after you go through this divorce, and I haven't been dating since you know I was married for sixteen years. Wow, so that's a very, long time. Yeah, too. the very first date, I brought flowers. I did this. I got reservations and all that. Yeah, I show up and she don't look anything like her pictures. Seriously, <laughs> so stuck like Chuck. Now I had to go take her out, but. Take them on up for coffee first. <laughs> you even maybe get the, the refillable cup? Get the refillable cup. Here's a good tip <laughs> for you guys. Them, if you're going to be doing a lot of them, um, get the refillable cups, and it's 50 cents for a cup of coffee. There you go. Starbucks. You're welcome, Starbucks. <laughs> you're welcome. We'll get some money for the advertising. Out there. So. If you guys liked what you saw today, I'd love for you guys to leave a little comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think. I'm also going to... I'd like to know, like, where the heck can we they find you if they want to find I'm you? I'm on Snapchat, Instagram, okay. uh, Josh2, and then spell out point zero, Josh2.0. P-O-I-N-T. You got it. Got yes. it. Okay. Sorry, and, I can spell it. <laughs> uh, and Facebook, I'm on there as well. Make sure you give lots of love to them on the comments, and also subscribe if you like what you heard today. There's tons more exciting things coming from Dad Hustle. Appreciate you, man. No, yeah, bring it in here. It's love, much love for you. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we're going to have him on again. Actually, we have, uh, we already have an idea about when we have you on again. Talking That's about right. Different yeah. cultural dads. Different culture, you know, because Mexicans, we do things a little bit different, you know, just a little bit. We get a little chunk glass belt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be good too. Stay tuned for that, guys. My name is Will Crown, and as always, keep hustling, dads. That's right. You can't stop me! That's all you got. That's good. Dude, you look good on camera, bro. Look at you. It's that smile. Oh, man. We're our worst critics. So I'm like, damn. Yeah, me too. Bro. For sure. I know, right? Let me sit up.
Suck this in. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Oh, man. Right. At least you're not red. My shirt makes my face look even redder than it normally is. And it's pretty red normally. Yeah. Pretty bad. Okay.